stars you were chasing shine bright deep inside you. When will you ever let it shine from within and cast all of your fears aside? You'll see the light of oh, Welcome back to Kingdom Reviews. I'm your host, Future Key Bearer. Today, we journey to Prankster's Paradise. After the dive segment gives us the most broken command in the game, Sora arrives to find a familiar face. Hey, Jiminy. What's up? Hmm? Who are you? You shouldn't be here, young man. What? Are you okay, Jiminy? Nominee! Actually, via another flashback section, we realize that this Jiminy is nothing more than a manifestation of the dream world. After Sora introduces himself, Jiminy remembers that he heard Sora's name from Pinocchio earlier. And this is probably the one flashback that I'm not crazy about. All the others are either Yen Sid's exposition or expansions on the world's stories. In other words, they can all easily be skipped. This scene of Pinocchio in the cage, however, which makes me wonder how he got in there since this is still Pleasure Island and not Stromboli's wagon, is important. And the scene feels awkward if you cut this out. This always just bothered me. Anyway, Sora offers to help Jiminy find Pinocchio. But how in the world do you know Pinocchio? Uh... Look, a distraction! Where? Actually, I'm not that far off. Over there! I see him! Gosh! That is Pinocchio! All aboard, Jiminy! <laughs> Take it away! You know, despite the series' tendency to forget that Jiminy exists, this just feels right. So the two give chase, and we see this world's reality shift. <laughs> Basically, you just absorb the enemies and make them explode. Like, bubbles do. Eventually, they find Pinocchio. Or so they think. Pinocchio! There you are. Pinocchio, it's not safe for you here. Listen to Jiminy and go back to... Oh, what? hi! Dream Eaters! Honestly, it's kind of sad that these Dream Eaters don't pull this trick outside of this. I mean, sure, in combat they do disguise themselves as drop items, but maybe they could disguise themselves as other Dream Eaters? So after the fight, which included me somehow zooming Sora back to the front gate, the two chase Pinocchio up to a nearby tower. Come on, let's go home. Ah! Oh, thank God they aren't making me fight up here. Another imposter. To be fair, that one's not wearing an alt skin. And seeing as how they have no other options, Sora and Jiminy follow the puppet into the circus tent filled with Geppetto's works. Has Geppetto been selling clocks to the coachman? Eventually, they finally catch up with Pinocchio, interrupting him in the middle of making his fursuit. And we get, honestly, one of the more interesting fights. This is one of the few non-boss fights in the series that actually makes good use of the location, allowing you to use the trampolines to bounce the enemies into the air to disorient them. Afterwards, Sora runs into a familiar face. You again? Not that one. Demnus? There we go! My, my. A hollow puppet that's managed to grow a heart. Just imagine that. Pinocchio isn't anything like you nobodies. But if Pinocchio could be given one, shouldn't you be able to have a heart inside you too? You know, I'm glad that even though they don't quite explore it as much, they did bring back this concept from when this world was going to be in 358. Do not forget that you yourself are not so very different from us. How am I anything like a nobody? I wondered about that as well, but the more I think about it, it might be less about what Sora is and what Xemnas wants him to be. But no time to dwell on that as Sora encounters the Blue Fairy. You must be Sora. Oh, yes ma'am. You know, if I had a nickel for every time Haley Joel Osment had a scene with the Blue Fairy. Anyway, she tells Sora that Pinocchio and Jiminy went after Monstro in search of Geppetto. Naturally, Sora takes off after them. So we make our way to the seashore, 
running into Prince Naveen on the way. This is a late game optional enemy, don't worry about it. And we end up... Okay, so you may be wondering, how the hell is Sora able to breathe underwater despite not being a merman? Well, to that I say, just be grateful we're not dealing with awkward swimming controls. All jokes aside, this can either be explained with A, this is just how this world works, remember Jiminy didn't need to breathe in the movie, or B, it's just the logic of a dream and nothing more. Moving on, Sora catches up with Pinocchio and Jiminy just in time to see them get eaten by Monstro. He gives chase, but so does a massive dream eater who... turns Monstro into a popsicle. A little disappointing that we're not fighting Monstro, but I guess that's what Birth by Sleep Final Mix is for. As for the boss we actually get... It kinda sucks! Most of the fight is just chasing this fucking thing around this huge arena, dealing chip damage when you can. Though I will grant the finale is cool, using Reality Shift to put Monstro in a giant bubble and then chase this thing with it. Afterwards, Monstro gets a nice lobster dinner, and Sora ends up washed up on a beach. I get it now. After this, Pinocchio and Jiminy's world gets dragged into darkness, and they end up cast into the sea between worlds. Is that their explanation for Monstro and Hook's ship floating around in space in KH1? Yeah, I guess it's as good as any. And so Sora finds the keyhole, and we move on to Riku's side. Riku, of course, finds himself in the belly of the beast, where he meets Geppetto. Now, stop me if you've heard this one. Geppetto mentions that Pinocchio has gone off on his own somewhere, and he's worried sick. Even Riku notices how familiar this all is. Though, to be fair, there is a reason for it. Naturally, Riku offers to go find Pinocchio, and Jiminy decides to come with. Something about him being on Riku's shoulder just doesn't feel right. So we go further inside, and thank god it's not the frickin' labyrinth that it is in the first game. And it's not too long before the two find Pinocchio. Which, given the wild goose chase over in Sora's story, that's fair. And it turns out he was being led along by... Data Riku! No, but god, that would have been something. That was my... My dark side. Oh, please. That thing is far more threatening than Dark Side. Unfortunately, it's less my past mistakes coming to haunt me and more darkness, grrr. But no time to dwell on that as there's a mysterious rumbling and I don't think it's a whale-sized tummy ache. And it's in this chamber where we learn about these... uvula-looking things that change the landscape. So, do Monstro's insides just independently twist around? Or is the entire whale flipping upside down? Honestly, given this insanity, I'm thinking the former. So we finally make it to the boss, and... It's... Kinda better than Sora's? It still has the annoyance of chasing it around a big arena, but it only has so far it can run. And you get to utilize the uvula gimmick in a fun way. That is, in fact, a sentence I just said. And thus, Pinocchio is returned safely... Sort of, considering the fact they're technically still whale chow. And Riku unlocks his keyhole. Meanwhile, Axel and the other former organization members are busy wondering what happened to their former cohorts. So do you think they were blasted off to some other world, or what? I highly doubt it. When someone who's lost their heart is re-completed, they should return to the place where it happened. And if that world is unavailable for whatever reason, a refuge is made for them in the realm between, a world called Traverse Town. Yeah, that's something that was mostly hinted at in the first game, so it's nice to have confirmation here. Could they not have been recompleted at all? Well, you see, that, forget it. He tried to explain this series to my friends. And so Axel resolves to find their missing members. So that was Prankster's Paradise. A pretty alright world. Obviously, Sora's side was more interesting, with both the wonderfully detailed Pleasure Island and beautifully designed ocean segments. But I will give credit to Riku's side, as I feel it was a massive improvement compared to KH1. Well, that's it for this episode. Tune in next time as we get digital. Again.